Welcome everyone to class. This is our uh, last class on uh, children's ministry. So from Monday onwards, um, uh, Pastor Voshin will begin taking classes on uh, youth ministry. So today is our last class. Before we begin our class today, can one of you please lead us in prayer, please? Anyone? Yes, we can pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this morning. Uh, we thank you uh, that you are continuing to Sorry. guide us. Uh, we, we thank you, Lord, that you are continuing to guide us and you are allowing us to continue to know you. Heavenly Father, as we prepare to to learn and continue to understand on how we can minister to boys and girls, the ones that you love and that you have given us. Lord, we pray that you will continue to give us more insights. We present to you our teacher that you will give him the right vocabulary and the methods that we will be able to learn. And in all, your name will be glorified. For in Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. 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 Thank you, Charles. Sorry, I couldn't hear you. Uh, okay. So uh, last week, uh, sorry, last class, we um, were looking at how to narrate a, a story. And before that, we looked at the important things that we need to keep in mind uh, while writing, uh, you know, the main content of uh, each lesson. So I just uh, gave you some important points to keep in mind. Uh, which will help in writing the main content of a lesson and then i began um uh, you know looking at how uh, we can um, uh, tell a story to the children because children love to listen to stories and you know uh, the way we tell them will ha always help capture uh, their attention so um, we said the beginning of the story is very, very important. And uh, we looked at four main ways to begin a story um, and uh, to understand how to narrate a story. We said we'll uh, look at First Kings chapter 21, uh, where um, uh, King Ahab wanted uh, Naboth's vineyard. And so we looked at how we can start uh, the, sto the story in four different ways. We said uh, it can be a direct approach where you can start with the action of the story. And I said, uh, what could be the action of the story? Or you can start with asking a question. Is there something that you really like, really want? Uh, something that you are uh, anticipating, looking forward, desiring to have from a very long time? Or you can also begin uh, with an exciting part of the story. Um, uh, and I said, you know, and it's like a flashback, um, uh, you know, effect that it'll have. So you can start somewhere in the middle of the story and then come back to the uh, beginning and then narrate the entire uh, narrative. Or you can start with an illustration. Um, and that's where I ended. They said that, you know, you could um, you, you can use a small uh, incident from everyday life, but ensure that uh, uh, that is something that children will identify with. They will connect with. Um, it's something that uh, they are going through and also, uh, you know, which will create a sense of curiosity, uh, excitement and anticipation for them to uh, listen to um, the, the rest of the narrative that you have for them. Them, the biblical um, narrative so then i just uh, for i i i just gave something very small about how two uh, girls you know have do a doll uh, each but uh, you know um, susan had um, a latest um, doll and how rita wanted it and how she longed for it even though she had her own doll but how she longed for susan's uh, doll so that you can uh, narrate it for children in grade two three because or younger than that because you know um, they love playing with dolls but not for children uh, grade of you know even four and uh, above uh, for children grade four and above i usually 
uh, you know, give them this real life example that happens. That's why I said, you know, when we are writing a lesson plan, it's good to prepare a week in advance so that, you know, if you read something in the newspaper, you come across it in the news or something that happened in your everyday life, something on the way to office, something in the mall, in the, in the markets that you went to, you can use that as a real life example uh, to illustrate, you know, what you are going to teach them. Uh, so when I uh, narrate this um, this narrative about uh, King Ahab and Naboth, I use this real life example of um, an incident that happened uh, in North India in one of the places. And, uh, you know, there was this very famous rich man who owns this, um, you know, business of making uh, chips and, you know, uh, these eats which come in tetra packs. Uh, um, and uh, he has his company very close to the uh, the airport in in one of the states in North India, and uh, just next to his um, his property or his factory where all these chips and mixture and you know uh, uh, eats are uh, uh, you know produced and packaged. Uh, there is an empty plot of land, a good piece of land. And there we see only a tea stall vendor having his tea stall. I remember, you know, um, when I when I went to the city and I came out of the airport, I saw this place and I was quite amazed because, uh, you know, in the state, there is no piece of land that's available. And here there is this empty plot of land. I remember seeing it. And so that's why I was very curious to, to read about this in the newspaper. So, um, the owner of this uh, this factory, you know, he sends his manager to find out who is the owner of this plot of land. And then uh, he comes to know it's the tea stall owner who is uh, the owner of that, uh, that, uh, that, that piece of land. And so he tells his uh, manager, you know, uh, you tell him that I will give him uh, a good uh, money for his land if he's willing to sell it. Um, and the tea stall owner says, refuses, he says no. Um, you know, the manager kind of um, uh, negotiated with him for a good higher price, but he was not willing to even take that higher price. So he came back and told the owner, the owner told him, okay, tell him that I will give him a better piece of land in the heart of the city, uh, you know, uh, which he can uh, buy and take in exchange for this. So the manager goes back and tells him and uh, the tea store owner refuses even that. So uh, this man is so angry uh, because, you know, he's gone to an extent where he's giving him a huge price for the land beyond the real estate, um, uh, beyond what's the price. He's also willing to give him a plot of land in the heart of the city. And this man is outrightly refusing. And it was amazing to read because this man had the same thing that was in the Old Testament concept. He said, I got this piece of land for my uh, forefathers. It's something that is, you know, um, belongs to the generations and um, because it is uh, part of our forefathers piece of land i can't sell it i can't sorry i can't give it away uh, so you know the the uh, the um, owner of this factory was so angry he goes to the extent of um, you know plotting with his manager and you know killing this tea stall owner and he thought he's a rich man he can uh, you know get away with it because this is money his uh, you know his um, um, connects that he has uh, he thought he can get away with the murder but you know uh, he actually got that man tea stall owner killed took that property extended his factory but the police you know when they investigated they got up to the manager and the manager spilled the beans he he said everything and you know um they caught hold of the owner and this man who's a very famous man his company is very famous throughout india uh, was put into um, uh, jail so you know um i just briefly very briefly narrate this whole incident to children because they all know this uh, uh, this company is called Haldi Rams, and uh, all of these children, all of our children in in India, they eat uh, a lot of snacks from this company. Uh, so, 
and then you know you connect it with the Bible story, they'll be very interested uh, to know. So you know you can bring about an illustration, uh, or you can even do uh, an object lesson um, uh, talking about greed. Remember um, last class, last Wednesday, I spoke about greed. I used uh, the tissue paper and I spoke about how you know when you put small droplets of water, which signifies things that we want. We can still use a tissue paper, but you know, when we keep wanting it more and more, and I just put a lot of water, it kind of tears the tissue paper and it's it's useless, it's worthless, and it, it destroys the tissue paper and how greed can destroy our life. So you can start out with that object lesson as well. Okay. Um so the next thing is once you've done with the introduction, then you go on to the progression of um, uh, events. It's very important that uh, you know. Uh, you run the story um, not only in your mind but write it down so that you know you children are able to connect from one point to another point uh, sometimes what happens is uh, you know we are so familiar with bible narratives we can miss out on a point and we can go back and say hey you know uh, before this happened uh, you know what um, uh, before Naboth went and uh, sorry before Ahab went into Naboth's vineyard you know what happened his the queen came to his room and then you can narrate the son it finds children will find it very difficult to connect adults of course for us it's okay but children are not adults uh, you know their minds are not fully um, able to comprehend things they need things to see things in, in logical progression of events so it's important that you write down the whole narrative progression of events one after the other so here we you can see um, the progression of events Ahab uh, covets Naboth's vineyard Ahab asks Naboth for it and Naboth refuses sale or exchange Ahab sulks uh, Jezebel intervenes and then um, you know Jezebel writes letters to uh, the heads in his village and Naboth is killed because he is uh, charged of blasphemy he's taken out and stoned and then um, you know Queen Jezebel comes and tells Ahab you know Naboth is dead you can go and take the vineyard it's your possession it's yours now and then God tells Elijah what uh, Na Na uh, King Ahab has done he tells him to go and meet um, uh, King Ahab uh, who is in Naboth's vineyard and he goes um, and uh, sorry and he meets Elijah and he uh, tells him you know what is going to happen now so this is the progression of events so you need to run it across in your mind and even as you are narrating to them these progression of events remember I said package it with learning in between so just don't narrate the story and then come to the end uh, and you know uh, give them the learning but you know uh, like I said package it in between the learning uh, uh, what they need to learn, what they the truths that you want to tell them, the uh, truths you want to communicate, the theology you want to teach them, uh, and also the learning and how they can apply. And after you narrate the whole sequence of events, the progression of events, you've done your, you know, you've um, taught them the truths, the theology, whatever. Then we come to the next point is um, climax. Now, climax and conclusion are two different things. Climax is not conclusion, and conclusion is not a climax. So, what do you think is the climax in uh, this uh, narrative in First Kings chapter twenty-one? What do you think is the climax? Or what is climax? Before I ask you, what is the climax in the story? Basically, climax is the high point of the story where all the events have now has led up to this point called climax it's where the hero wins the problem is solved the mystery ends or what the person wants he receives it um, so you know and it is actually bringing the children the young ones uh, to the peak of their interest their curiosity you're trying to satisfy their curiosity in climax uh, you're trying to uh, you know get them to know what's a suspense uh, what is, um, you know, whether the plot has been entangled, um, whether, uh, you know, the uh, there's a right ending to the whole thing. So that is the climax. So what is the climax in uh, Naboth's um, uh, or in First Kings chapter 21? Yes, Rupa?
Yes, go ahead, Rupa. Maybe she's lost connection. Okay, anyone else till we wait for Rupa? Can anyone else tell me what you think is the climax? Yes, go ahead, Rupa. If you're there, you can speak. Ma'am, wrong touch, just touch that. Okay, okay. Okay, fine. Okay, what's the climax in the story? Come on, guys. Yes, Christopher. Uh, the climax would be probably like a like, like a dramatic uh, conclusion, something that will you know make may um, uh, put put together you know what whatever the content of the of the lesson is, summarize it, and then you know add um, a sort of a final. Um, dramatic uh, ending to it so yeah that's that's what a climax would be according to me yes that is what climax is so in this story what is a climax yes charles thank you christopher oh i for now i was going to talk about the the, the what a climax is but now the question has changed Okay. Yes, I said the climax, the high point of the story, all the other events have led up to it. You know, it's where the hero wins, uh, the problem is solved, the mystery ends, and it's where we're bringing up, it's heightening up the excitement of the kids, you know, satisfying their curiosity, just like even Christopher said. So, uh, so the climax is where Naboth is killed and King Ahab gets the vineyard. Okay, that could be uh, one of the climax. Thank you, Kung. Uh, yes, climax is the culmination. Okay. Yes, Charles, you have your hand again up. I was going to say when uh, Ahab gets the land. Okay. Uh, King Ahab gets the land could be one of the climaxes. What is he? What can be the other climax? The other climax could be that you know God telling Elijah go and meet King. Uh, Ahab and tell him that where Naboth died, you will also, just like the way he died, the dogs came and licked his wound, the, uh, his blood, the same way you will die, and also the wicked queen uh, Jezebel. So that is a climax. So a story can have two or three different climaxes. So here we have two. One is, you know, did King Ahab get the land? Uh, they get the vineyard? Yes, he did get it. Uh, another climax could also be um, that, you know, uh, God's punishment or you can even stop with just the climax that he got the vineyard and then you can talk about greed but you can also go on to talk about you know the punishment that God pronounced and you can talk about that for every greed or every sin that we commit there is serious consequences there is serious punishment um, uh, that goes out and that uh, you know uh, God sees our sin and there is a punishment uh, that we receive. So here the punishment is that just like Nabor died, King Ahab and Queen uh, Jezebel will die. So in some stories uh, which can be very long, the narratives are very long, uh, there can be different uh, climaxes um, in uh, different parts of the story so you can you can decide ahead of time where do you want to stop you know and what is the climax that you want to uh, bring about okay so I hope you understood what a climax is and next after the climax comes the uh, conclusion. So immediately after the climax is the conclusion. Um, now you need to give a careful thought about how you're going to uh, finish the story uh, you know, it's important that you conclude the story in a nice way, not just end it with, hey, there was a punishment that uh, Elijah came and gave, um, uh, you know, God pronounced and Elijah came and told it to Ahab. But you need to tell the kids whether that came about, whether that was fulfilled. So that is the conclusion. So if you don't choose to say what Elijah came and met and told Ahab, you leave it uh, and you just like to leave it as, you know, King Ahab got the, um, uh, the vineyard, then, you know, your conclusion can be about greed and how greed destroys our life. But if you're talking about what Elijah told uh, King Ahab, then you need to come to uh, bring a conclusion about talking about, hey, did this really happen uh, to 
um, you know, uh, King uh, Ahab. So then the conclusion can be in this story can be what happened to Ahab and Jezebel. That is a conclusion. So Ahab went out a battle. He disguised himself uh, to the enemy uh, as just a normal person and not as a king. And he was, you know, an arrow that was uh, that struck him and he died and he fell down. And, you know, just like God said, the dogs came and licked his uh, blood just as they did for Naboth. And sometime later, Jezebel was also thrown from uh, by the enemies from a high window, just as God said would happen. And also the dogs came and licked her um, blood. So what is the use of Naboth's vineyard now? So that can be your conclusion because both of them are dead. You know, what is the use uh, for their greed? Uh, nothing came about it, their sin, nothing came about about it so you can say you know you're talking about sin or you're talking about greed um you can say that you know it has no everlasting or far-reaching cons uh you know joy it does not bring joy happiness or blessing but it brings only a terrible uh, consequences of the deeds or the sin that we have uh committed okay so that can be the conclusion so i hope now you understood what is the climax of the story and what is the conclusion okay so now you've uh, narrated the entire story you've used uh, you know you've done a good job you've used uh, various activities object lessons you've uh, begun your story well you've uh, you know you try to uh, to narrate the uh, uh, the story and you know package it with truths and theological truths that you have told them uh, you've also narrated the story using pictures or object lessons you know uh, facial expressions tone of voice uh, you've done all of those things and you're very happy but you need to come to now you come to the most important part of the story or the most important part of the lesson and what is that what is the most important part after climax and conclusion what is the most important part It's the moral attitude. of the story and the yeah. uh, application. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes, it's the moral of the story or it's the application. So, um, you know, you need to uh, get help children how to apply the truth that they you have taught them uh, or the learning objectives that you had in mind. Remember, I said every lesson we begin by learning the, writing the learning objectives, you know, how you are going to help them to apply those uh, objectives in their everyday um, life. And your application should not be vague in the sense uh, uh, okay, children, so what did we learn from, um, uh, you know, um, King Ahab's uh, greed, that uh, greed destroys our lives, so we need to be very careful, you know, um, because we know that greed will destroy our life. So let's pray and ask God uh, to help us to overcome greed. Now, that is a very big general kind of an application but you need to get down to the specifics uh, you can say uh, you know children we saw how greed destroys our life so I want you to take a minute or two to just write down which are the areas that you are very uh, you see yourself being very greedy okay so get them to write down because different children have different areas where they are you know experiencing greed uh, so you can ask them to write it down and then you can ask them to write down okay now since you've identified your area of greed how are you going to overcome it now it's easy to say let's just pray about it and god will give us the strength yes that is the most important thing that we do we tell them we pray about it you pray about it ask the holy spirit to help you give you the grace and the strength you can lead them to do that but before that how can you overcome this greed? Some practical ways that they can do it. You know, so if they like to share it, then you can say, okay, how do we help uh, Susan, you know, overcome her greed? Or how can we help Asha overcome her greed? Or how can we help uh, Tom help overcome his greed? So, you know, uh, this is his area. So you can give various suggestions. 
and um, you know or you can um, uh, give them various examples of uh, how people have overcome greed in that area and that becomes very uh, practical for them and so they know how specifically to go back and implement that uh, you know and overcome greed in that area now for an, uh, another example if you say uh, okay today what did we learn we learned about obedience and we know children that God wants us to obey him obedience is very important if we don't obey you know uh, we don't receive his blessing and and all of those things but you know that's ch what children have heard you know day in and day out from their parents even in, in Sunday school but you know there can be specific areas where they are having a challenge uh, to obey you know so where is uh, your you know uh, where do you find it challenging to obey uh, and who do you find it difficult to obey why do you find it difficult to obey them what can you do so you know just giving them practical tips uh, would help children most of the time we have only a, a maximum eight to ten children and then lesser than that so it's easier for us to work with each child and then you know the the whole lesson becomes very relevant for them and how to apply things in their life uh, you are teaching them at a very young age uh, even when they go to adult church and they're listening to a sermon and automatically their system is, you know, is just being taught how to put into practice, how to work on those areas, how to, you know, put, uh, uh, make it relevant in their lives. And so the word of God comes uh, alive. It, uh, it just helps them. It just becomes um, very relevant in their day to day uh, situation. Yes, Charles. Oh, thank you. I, I was I wanted to add something about the application. Like you when you have taught the lesson, sometimes you might be dealing with children that are already saved and you are doing um a discipleship teaching where you might again weave the application. You have application one where you are identifying the problem and you are giving some literal helps. Like if it was greed, you are talking about it, then there somewhere towards the end, you can give another application where you are giving the practical helps on how to do it. For instance, you can say, whenever greed comes to you, you can stop during the week. Stop, remember the memory verse. You give them, like you can remind them to remember the memory verse since they will have written it down. Then from there, you can also tell them if you have stopped, you have remembered the memory verse, say it to yourself. And then from there, you can again say, maybe you can again uh, ask God to give you strength to overcome the greed. In that way, you will also tell them to thank God that he has given you the strength to overcome the greed. Such steps also really help when you have woven the, the applications in the lesson and then the final part I uh, would be giving the final applications to help the child grow in Christ. Thank you. Thank you, Christopher. Uh, sorry, thank you, Charles. Uh, yes, um, I think, you know, sometimes uh, what you said is very relevant and good, Charles, but sometimes, you know, making everything very uh, spiritual kind can get a uh, you know can can kind of put off children can like it puts us off sometimes uh, sometimes being more practical and relevant can really uh, help so for example you know uh, telling a child like you know if um, if the parent gets them chocolates or gets them uh, or in school you know they get a chocolate or get two chocolates they come back home they're not eating that and they have two with them you know they can uh, they can be greedy enough to eat both of them or they can you know be willing to give it give one to their uh, sibling or share it with their sibling uh, you know um, so you know at that time the practical thing to tell the child is you know if you had two uh, you know what would you do you would want to eat both of them but you know what would God want us to do is to give one to your your sister you know or uh, to a friend um or um, you know to the, your, the child you're playing with uh, every day uh, near your house um, 
or if your mom packs for you in a tiffin box and she puts you uh, just say like um, uh, you know uh, four four chocolates or you know four cookies then you can just share one with your friend so you know being greedy is you eating up everything so in just very practical simple ways uh, just teaching them uh, you know how to do it so that it just becomes a lifestyle uh, for them then of course you know all of the others think of the memory verse think about what God would do you know think of uh, how God would be pleased and all of that uh, would come later but then you know uh, just getting it very practical basically uh, helps uh, uh, children in the first go and then of course all the others uh, follow okay so then once you're done with the application you can get down to teaching them the memory verse now memory verse is not just say okay today's memory verse is this and turn to the bible and get them to read it and repeat it and repeat it and repeat it but you can do it in a very creative way you can get them to repeat it once or twice and then you can have a small soft ball or you know a football and just take it and throw it and say i'm going to throw this to one person that one person will say uh, the first word or two words or three words in the memory verse if it's a big memory verse and then take that ball and throw it to the next person and the next person will say the next two words in the memory verse so if you're saying if you're teaching them john 3 16 then you know i can i can say okay today's memory verse is john 3 16 and i take it take the ball and throw it to one child and the child can say begin by saying for god so loved okay for god so loved four words and then you know the the next child the child can throw it to the next person and the next child can say one word or three words or four words whatever and that becomes very interesting for children to learn memory verse sometimes you can just write the memory verse on the board get them to repeat it twice and then the third time you know erase one letter and just put uh, fill in the blanks so you know uh, it just becomes very exciting for them or you can teach them memory verse through song give just put uh, uh, you know um, uh, music to it and teach them you can also teach them a memory verse through action you know uh, you can uh, you know love the lord your god with all your heart with all your uh, mind with all your soul and with all your strength and love your neighbor you know as yourself so you know, basically just for smaller children you can um, teach them uh, through action and you know the actions help them to um, remember remember we said that children learn 90 percent by hearing seeing and doing so even memory verse can um, help that ways and then you can end uh, you know the class in, in the word of prayer um, yeah close with prayer basically don't make your prayer very general thank you god for bringing us to sunday school for teaching us help us to be like david help us to be like bartimaeus help us not to be like uh, king ahab uh you know um um uh, but you know make it more specific uh you know uh, just saying holy spirit we invite you to help us uh to overcome uh the spirit of greed we just break the spirit of greed in jesus name over our lives and you can tell children to repeat that so you're teaching them to pray powerful prayers you know how to pray how to break strongholds um in jesus name uh, uh, uh i i we ask you, Holy Spirit, to break the spirit of greed, uh, greed break the spirit of uh, disobedience. And then you can say, children, whichever is your area of greed, you know, just take this time to commit it to the Lord and just say, Holy Spirit, uh, I give you all of these uh, areas of my disobedience, sin, greed, whatever is it, um, and I'm willing to submit my life, submit these areas, take control, help me. You know, so you're teaching them to pray meaningful prayer, uh, powerful prayers, uh, you know, which can uh, have greater significance and eternal value and, um, you know, uh, can help them know how to pray also in the uh, future. Okay, so you can end with prayer uh, and then, you know, make sure that, um, you know, you can also have a time of, uh, if you have time, you know, just question answer of course we did that through uh, in the lesson plan we said stop at various points ask them so you know they have um, understood what you have learned don't wait till the end to ask them questions and then be disappointed hey they haven't understood the main truth of the lesson i wanted to communicate you know do it at various points so that um, you know they um, you can understand you can reiterate and it will just help the uh, children okay so this is all about how to narrate a story 
and how to write a um, lesson plan and this is the uh, uh, you know the end of the course so anyone has any questions anything that you'd like to ask you can ask anything any questions No questions? Okay, if there are no questions, then um, just a reminder that today is your uh, assessment one. Okay, um, you can, um, you know, I'll post it uh, before 6 p.m. today, and please ensure that you, uh, you submit your assessments um, on Friday. Uh, end of day by 11.59 p.m., okay? And uh, when can we have the second assessment? When can we have the second assessment? Can you give us a date? Give, give, me, a, give me a date, please. Because 15th, we have, um, that is the following Wednesday, you have your first assessment on uh, First Timothy, do you want me to um, schedule your second assessment for Children's Ministry on 22nd of March? Is it too late or you want to have it earlier? Uh, what's that? Uh, please schedule uh, Children's Ministry on earlier because that's the, the most difficult one. Sorry, Mangi. Can you repeat that again, uh, please? I'm saying, please give us more time on the children ministry one. So schedule it earlier so that we can have time to work through it. Yes. So I'm giving you, uh, okay. I the assessment. Thank you, Mangi. The assessment is scheduled for today, and you have to submit it on the tenth. So you have like almost uh, two full days, two and a half days, the whole of ninth, whole of tenth, and uh, you know half, almost half day today. So that is for your assessment one. Uh, Abhishek says, um, you know, you can have it next Monday, which is 13th. But if I'm giving it on 13th, then you, it'll clash with your first Timothy assessment on 15th. Is that okay? Or do you want me to keep it on the 22nd of March? Uh, 22nd of March is a Wednesday, so you can uh, submit it on... 24th of March. Is that fine? This the, the second assessment, which is the last assessment for children's ministry. Is that fine, everybody? 22nd March. Okay, thank you, Harrison. Okay, thank you, everyone. So your first assessment is today, and your second assessment is on the 22nd. Is that enough time, Mangi? 22nd, 23rd, 24th, is that fine? Because uh, that's what yes. we decided earlier. Yes, Pastor, it is okay. enough time. Okay. Thank you, Mangi. And just as Christopher had requested, I have uh, uh, posted um, one or two lines for each video in the stream page, so all of the videos that are posted on the stream page will also have um, a small write-up of what was taught in that class so you know which video is about what oh okay 23rd mission trip to mangalore all of you are going sorry oh all of you are going you're going on the 23rd Okay, then can, uh, because the in-person students are going for a mission trip uh, on the 23rd, so then we can't, can't post it on the 22nd. Can we have it on the 28th, 28th that is a Monday, and then you, are, can, you can submit it on the 22nd, is that fine? So you have two and a half days? Is that fine? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Pratik, for uh, mentioning that. Okay, so your second assessment will be on the 20th. I'll release it on the 20th, and then you all can submit it on the 22nd, okay? 
Okay, thank you everyone for uh, joining the children's ministry class. I hope it um, has been of help and uh, useful for all of you. Um, many of you, even though you are not going to be involved in children's ministry, but you you will be pastors or maybe you know you have um, groups that you are leading families. Uh, you can also know how to you know cater to children, how to help them. Um, you know, uh, or in your um, in your own area as a, as a missionary or as an evangelist, uh, you can also help build up children's ministry. You can teach this to people who are involved in children's ministry, and it will benefit and um, help them. Okay. Uh, anything anyone likes to say before we end class? Yeah, um, I'd like to say thank you so much for teaching us for the last three years. Uh, in times we, we've been unruly and yeah, you've uh, been patient with us. But thank you so much, Pastor. We really appreciate it. We, you've input so much, uh, so much in us and we, we are not the same. Yeah, we've been blessed. Thank you so much, Pastor. Thank you so much, Maggie. I wouldn't call you unruly. <laughs> uh, you, you have been wonderful. Uh, thank you. I've just been thinking about um, about your whole, um, uh, you know, burden of understanding uh, predestination. So please listen to the sermons on Romans. If it's not available, let me know. I'll post it for you. Uh, you can listen to the sermons on, uh, sorry, the classes, um, basically Romans chapter uh, you know, as, as, uh, 9, 10, which talks about uh, predestination, God's choice, choosing, um, and how, you know, God has foreknowledge, but not predestines anyone uh, to sin or to be confined to hell or to eternal uh, death. Okay, so uh, if you can't access those um, uh, those lecture uh, videos, let me know, Mangi, on the stream page, and I will have it accessible for you so that you can listen. And, you know, that's very, very important for you to know and understand so it can benefit you because um, I think that's something that you're trying to grasp a hold of and understand. So, yeah. Yes, thank you, Charles. Uh, says it has been educative. Thank you, Pastor. Um, thank you, Asha. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Harrison. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, yes, so Rupa had something to say. A very big thank you, ma'am. really uh, learned so many things during this uh, children ministry, especially how to uh, be focused and uh, all those things which really helped me. Thank you. Please pray that we would put it into practice and raise up a children, a generation who will really love the Lord. And thank you for the passion you have for the Lord. And thank you for being a blessing to each one of us for the past three years. We want to bless you and may the Lord use you powerfully and fulfill all the purposes he has for you. Thank you, ma'am. God bless you. Thank you, Rupa. Receive everything. Thank you so much. Hey, guys, I'm still uh, coming back to you on Monday to teach you for First Timothy, Second Timothy, Titus, and Philemon. I'm in a race to finish that. Yes, Christopher? Yeah, it's only I just realized that you are actually going to be doing the Timothy one. So, yeah. But anyway, thank you so much. Um, there, there was just something I just realized, and maybe I'm not sure if, it's, um, if it, the question should be directed to you or to the administrator. Uh, but uh, of Bible College, but I think um, you know, if I remember correctly, for the first year, um, we did not have recordings of the videos, and it only start for us at least for for this batch at least, and um, uh, it for us it started only in the second year. So, is there any way we can access uh, the videos uh, for the first years? I mean, first first and second semester. Which would which would obviously uh, be for another batch, so that you know we can use we can have that as as our reference uh, at you know to be accessed um, uh, whenever we do require it. So just I just I'm not sure how how this can be arranged, but um, it would be nice if we can have we can have the first uh, our first year uh, uh, videos uh, available uh, or rather the first first and second year uh, second semester videos semester. available. 
let me check on that and then uh, I'll just post on the stream page, um, you know, if those are available and then uh, how you can access it. I'll, I'll do that. Thank you, Rose. Yes, show will pray. Uh, thank you, Prabhakar, as well. Um, yeah. Yes. Hope to see all of you at least in the classroom. I was just thinking, you know, before we uh, before I uh, end teaching um, uh, TTP, that is First Timothy, Second Timothy, Titus, and Philemon. I was just thinking, you know, when I come early to class, you can one of you can just put on your video so I can just get to see at least um, some of you on video if because you all live in different parts of the world, but um, you know. Uh, just to see you interact with you because it's been three years. Um, I I don't even know your faces. Uh, I can't, you know, it just be nice to know you. So maybe on Monday, you know, when I log in early, I can come in early. So uh, one or two of you can just come on, put on your videos. I just can look at your um, as your faces, your handsome faces, your beautiful faces, whoever it is, and then maybe just uh, <clears throat> get to know you a little more, and that just. Um, It'll be nice, actually. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, everyone. And um, have a blessed day and um, a blessed week ahead. And I'll see you on Monday for um, uh, for our class on Second Timothy. God bless everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much, Pastor. God bless. Thank you, Prabhakar. Thank you.